Right, OK, um, just a word about some of the indicators we use. They're collected by the London Health Observatory nationally. Um, there's a website again, um, lots of useful information for public people interested in public health. Uh, but it says it's about the capital, they're collecting a lot of national data as well, so well worth having a look at there. Um, some of the indicators are a little bit obscure, but there's plenty of information available if you want to look at this area as part of a five year project, for example, or part of public health and health promotion, uh, the teamwork module in year two. Um, okay, so. So here's an, uh, an obscure sounding indicator. I'm going to take a little bit of time to describe this. Uh, this isn't something to commit to memory, just an example of the sort of detail, uh, the way this sort of detail is generated. Uh, as we'll see later, this feeds into higher level visualizations such as spine plots. Okay. Um, again, it seems very complicated, but really it's just a question of compiling data on a particular metric, such as mortality. Uh, mapping that against social factors and then doing a relatively simple calculation. The people who do this, of course, use spreadsheets. I uh, already set up to do the sums. So here's a graph of all age and all cause mortality per 100,000 sorted by deprivation for Yorkshire and Humberside. Uh, the data has been plotted for each decile and a line of best fit has been produced. Um, the slightly daunting sounding slope index of inequality is then a simple calculation based on these values. Um, it is a very simple calculation. Obviously, there's quite a lot of data gone into that graph. Uh, so, moving on, and this is all the calculations done. Basically, it's just uh, the least deprived, uh, I beg your pardon, the most, the least, yes, I was right the first time, the least deprived minus the most deprived. In this case, I'll be 417 minus 836, which is minus 419. The negative slope indicates that this particular indicator decreases with decrease in deprivation. So the worse off you are, the more likely you are to die uh, relatively young, as we've been discussing all the way through this. Um, as discussed earlier, if you need to understand these indicators in detail, there's plenty of information out there. Uh, the different public health observatories seem to have covered the field quite well. Uh, those of you planning a career in public health should be aware of the data landscape discussed here and uh, what we talked about in the data visualization lecture because this is where you'll be working okay we'll have a look at the latest figures for uh, Middlesbrough towards the end of this lecture uh, I'm not going to suggest you might want to go and get a strong drink because I will be wrong you might want to go and get a cold flannel to put on your forehead uh, for now a reminder that such uh, data are incorporated we saw a little bit earlier on in the slope index type data, we incorporate them into higher level visualizations such as spine plots. Uh, spine plots allow comparison against both national and regional information. Okay, we're now moving on to how the public health framework has changed in the past couple of years. Uh, things have changed. Uh, the new government's made a number of changes to the organization of public health in England. Probably the most important change in the public health structure in England, in England is the transfer of responsibilities from primary care trusts, they say the NHS, to local authorities. This probably makes a lot of sense actually, not least because local authorities map better onto things like super output areas than primary care trusts do. Okay, here's the document talking about the changes. Uh, again, it's available, and certainly final years looking at a career in this area should be well aware of the changes. Um, when you go for interviews and things like that, this is the sort of thing you will be asked about. So the responsibility is moved to the local authorities who will be given a ring fence budget, uh, which is good, and they'll be able to choose how to spend it on the needs of their population, which is also quite good. Um, those who make the most improvements will be rewarded with a cash incentive. Uh, this health premium will be paid for progress made against the public health indicators that we've been talking about. Arrange them there. Um, fewer children under five will have tooth decay, uh, which is an indication not just of tooth decay, but a better diet, you know, fewer extraneous sugars in the diet, and a range of other indicators. Uh, the link there to uh, a lot more information if you're interested. Um, Okay, how much is it going to cost and who's going to pay for it? Uh, in February 2012, the government announced that the councils will be given 2.2 billion to prepare for this transfer of responsibilities. 
Uh, now, overall, the government is planning to spend $5.2 billion on public health uh, between April 2012 and April 2013. Uh, as I mentioned, from April 2012 to, through to April 2014, certainly, the public health budget will be ring-fenced. Uh, what happens after that, I'm not entirely clear about. Uh, there was a re recent attempt in Parliament by the Health Select Committee to remove the ring fencing after three years on the grounds that this could give the councils greater flexibility. This was rejected by the government and I must say I'm pretty happy that it was rejected. Uh, losing the ring fencing would be very damaging I think to public health in this country. Um, sadly as ever the changes weren't widely reported in the mainstream media. Environmental Health News, a news magazine produced by the CIAH, the Chartered Institute of Environmental Health, did report on the uh, announcement in some details. Um, this, is a, this is a bit of a controversial area. It's a big change being made against the background of big cuts in public spending and some voices have been raised expressing concerns about funding levels. Uh, again another article in CIH News reports evidence of wide discrepancies between how much money no local authorities will get. Um, the figures are based on current spending by PCTs. They aren't final but it is being suggested there may be a strong indication of how much money councils will eventually get. Um, okay. The article suggests the average English local authorities spend about £40 on public health per person. Some do better than others, some do worse. Uh, most, I beg your pardon, I'm going to start that again. Uh, the article suggests that the average spending for English local authorities is about £40 per person. Some do better than others, some do worse. Uh, most of our region actually does quite better than the national average on the basis of that calculation. So for example, Middlesbrough is spending about 99, uh, 99 pounds per head. Um, Stockton and Tees considerably less. Redcar, somebody pointed out Redcar this morning, quite a lot less than Middlesbrough. Um, plus we've got some bit smaller authorities, it has to be said. Um, so this is a bit, of, a bit of an open question, what's going to happen here. Uh, when asked about this, the Department of Health said that Council's actual ring fence grants will be calculated in a different way than these estimates were arrived at. Despite the strong implication, this is how it would be done. Uh, and he suspected the finalised figures will be announced around the end of this year. OK. Uh, as part of the new public health outcomes, there are two high-level outcomes. and. It's very clear that these map very nicely onto the previous Marmot object, uh, objectives, um, so that's pretty good. Um, OK, I'll confess I'm not completely clear to me what is meant by performance managing local areas. I guess it means that specific targets will not be set, but local authorities will be assessed on the improvements that they make in the indicators. OK, this is just how the mapping works between what are called domains and outcomes. Again, in reality, it's, it's not that much different from Marmot. There's de domains there, health improvement, for example, health protection, which, if they are acted on, will improve health, healthy life expectancy and reduce inequalities. Um, so the feed, the domains feed the outcomes, which ultimately achieves the objectives, we hope, of the uh, public health outcomes framework. I'm not going to review all the demands, you can do that yourself. Uh, there's lots of public informa published information available. Uh, one thing I will mention, and I'll talk about this a little bit here, is not all of them have suitable statistical indicators in place. So you'll notice, uh, okay, we're just going through them now. There's a number there, and we'll talk about now placeholders. Uh, so in this case, it's saying some further development needs to be needed needs to be done over the next 10 to 12 months. That is to say, in getting robust statistics in this area. Uh, so the problem with this area, it's been indicated as being a placeholder area, um, so there's still quite a lot more work needs to be done in that. That's not very surprising, I don't think. Uh, so they've told up the ones uh, for 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 the outcomes under D1, a readiness of indicators. Those in the green area are ready. Those in the mustard coloured area, not so much. Those in the red area. A new data source is required, which is obviously quite a big sort of step. Uh, it's a new framework, and an analysis was carried out during development of whether appropriate data sources were ready, and whether other definitions uh, that were suitable were available. Uh, so, in the case of domain one, almost all of the indicators are either in the green or mustard, apart from that for social connectedness. Uh, the framework notes that local authorities were their partners 
Uh, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll come on to that in a second. So again, this is the uh, D1 ready, readiness indicators. Which ones are ready? Which ones aren't ready? Okay, back to this. Back to this slide. Um, the framework notes that local authorities with their partners, including the police, uh, criminal justice system, schools, and presumably universities as well, employers, and business and voluntary sectors, will all have a significant role to play in improving performance against these indicators. And it's not just local authorities. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, the local authorities will get about 42% of the 5.2 billion the government intends to spend on public health during the next couple of years. Um, other money will be allocated to the NHS and other bodies. Um, I couldn't find the details how this is to be done. Um, there's a limit on how much time you can spend searching for these things. Hopefully it will become clear in the near future. Okay, another new idea is the public health responsibility deal with the food industry. Uh, there's a website for this, which I'll have a little dig for. Uh, public health responsibility deal, uh, indicating that the uh, food industry is shaking hands with the uh, with the public and uh, with a responsibility deal, which we'll we'll talk about what it entails as we go through the rest of this presentation. Uh, quoting from the website. The public health responsibility deal aims to tap into the potential for businesses and other influential organisations to make a significant contribution to improving public health by helping us create this environment. Uh, lots of stuff on the responsibility deal website. It includes news on the deal, information how companies and other organisations can, uh, can, can sign up. Okay, and it's uh, encompassed in a document there, the public health responsibility deal, which is available from the same website. Uh, there's a number of pledges agreed. Uh, three pledges relating to nutrition were agreed. There are also pledges relating to alcohol, health at work and physical activity. Um, presumably the alcohol pledges is distinct from nutrition pledges because it relates to more to behaviour related issues. Uh, more on that in a few slides. Uh, I'm going to pause there because I think we get near the limit again. So, I'll just 